Okay, the other type of circular motion we're going to talk about is vertical circular motion. And suppose we had uh, a ball uh, tied to the end of a string, and we're rotating it in a circle. And in one of the investigations, I asked you to try this on your own. So hopefully you've already done that. And the important thing here to remember is that the force of tension on this string towards the center of the circle, so FT for the tension, that is the force that's acting in the direction of the acceleration. Let me put the acceleration here in a different color. Right, so that's our acceleration. There is one other force that we have to deal with though, and that is the force of gravity. This ball is being pulled downwards by the force of gravity. So there's actually two forces here that are perpendicular, sorry, parallel to the acceleration. Right? These both, both of these forces are acting in the direction of the acceleration. One's opposite to the direction, one is in the same direction, but they both have an effect on the acceleration. Okay? So with gravity pulling downwards, the force of tension at the bottom of the swing here has to be higher because not only does this force of tension have to uh, keep this ball moving towards the center of the circle, but it also has to support the weight of the object. Okay. So again, if we start off by looking at Newton's second law, so the net force on this object causes a centripetal acceleration, I have the force of tension in the direction of motion and the force of gravity opposite, so it's a negative force, and that works out to be um, mv squared over r. So what we see is that uh, the force of tension actually increases. It's the centripetal force plus the force of gravity. Right? So the force of tension is larger than we normally expect because it has to do both. It has to cause the centripetal motion, but also support the weight. Uh, now, if we looked at the top of the circle, again, the force of tension here is towards the center. And now, sorry, the force of tension is towards the center. And now, the force of gravity is also towards the center of the circle. Okay, so both forces here are acting in the direction of motion so that when I write the equation now for the net force, I have Ft plus Fg. They're both in the same direction, causing that circular motion. And what you can see is the force of tension actually gets smaller. There's less tension at the top of this motion because now the force of gravity is actually helping the ball move in a circular path. Gravity is also pulling it towards the center of the circle. So I need less tension. Okay. That also means that there has to be some minimum speed needed before this object will keep going in a circle. Right? And again, if you tried this uh, in the investigation, you found that if you're going too slow, the ball doesn't make it all the way around the circular path. Okay, so really it's these two points that we're most interested in, the top of the circular motion and the bottom of the circular motion. Uh, as you're going upwards, the tension would be getting less. As you're coming down the other side, the tension would be increasing. Okay, let's take a look at uh, a, a different type of a question. So again, a car traveling along a circular path. This time the circular path is a vertical circular path. So it's traveling over the top of a hill. And we have our 65 kilogram student in the car and it's traveling horizontally over this circular path at 25 meters per second. And the radius of the circle is 110 meters. And we're asked, what is the normal force acting on this person? So again, at the top of the circle, gravity is acting downwards towards the center, so it's helping pull us towards the center. And this person will actually feel 
lighter. They'll experience less normal force. Okay, and again, the reason they're feeling less normal force is because now uh, the gravity, the force of gravity, is not pulling them into the car as much as pulling them around the circular path. Um, if we look at the equation, it'll maybe be a little bit more clear. The net force on this person is causing a centripetal acceleration, Fg in the direction of motion, the normal force opposite. So the normal force is going to be equal to mg minus mv squared over r. So you can see the normal force, which is normally equal to your weight, gets reduced by the amount of the gravitational force that's used up just to keep you moving in that circular path. Okay, so we're using some of the gravitational force to pull us down into the circle, not down into the seat of the car. So the normal force is going to be the 65 kilogram student times 9.8 minus 65 times the speed squared, v squared, over the radius, 110 meters. And what we find is that the normal force here is 268 newtons. Normally it would be around 650 newtons. It's been reduced all the way down to 268. So you actually start to feel lighter. Okay, And this is the beginning of uh, the discussion about gravitation, the second half of this unit, when we start looking at astronauts that are in orbit, and we all know that they are weightless in orbit, and it's not that there's no gravity there, of course there's gravity in orbit, but what's happening is uh, there's no normal force. Basically all of the gravitational force is being used just to keep them in orbit, and there's no force pulling them down into the floor of the space shuttle or the space station. Okay, so we'll talk about gravitation in the next couple of videos, um, but that's basically vertical circular motion.